Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you in prayer in the name of Jesus, asking you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Bless us, Lord God, as we get into your word, and we want to pray that you illuminate it. And we thank you and send your presence and power among us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, what we want to do, we want to um, get right into our presentation. Um, the reason why we need the straight testimony today, and not just, um, and I need it as my, I need it my, I need it as well myself because of the thing called leaping compromise, leaping compromise. And um, this is going on. And the real question is, will the real Seventh Day Adventist please stand up? Will the real Seventh Day Adventist please stand up? You know, Ellen G. White says that a revival of true godliness among us is the greatest and most urgent of our needs. To seek this should be our first work. She says, and to see our, be our first work, and that's biblical because the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness is his righteousness by faith, which is the unblemished character of Christ offered to us as a free gift. And the Bible says, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The Bible says in Luke chapter 13, that the kingdom of God is within you. So what happens when you receive Christ, the kingdom of Christ is within us, where the kingdom of grace, where Christ rules upon our heart as Lord and Savior and Master is upon us. And with that, not only does he rule upon our hearts, he gives us his righteousness. And the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So it says there must be an earnest effort to obtain the blessing of the Lord, not because God is not willing to bestow his blessing. Notice this right here, but because we are unprepared to receive him. Our heavenly father is more willing to give his Holy Spirit to them that ask him than our earthly parents to give good gifts to their children. But it is our work. Notice this right here by these simple things, by confession, confessing all of our sins, humiliation, humbling ourselves, repentance, turning away from our sins, and earnest prayer to fulfill the conditions upon which God has promised to grant us his blessing. Then the prophet of the Lord says a revival need be expected, only an answer to prayer. So this is what we need. We need a revival and reformation among our people. And listen to this right here, because we're in the greatest crisis in the history of seven-day Adventism. And the journey to apostasy, apostasy begins with a single compromise. You know, the, the, the thing that is so serious about sin is, is that once you get in it, it's, it, it takes you so long to get back. And so what happens is this right here, it takes us so long to get back. That's why we have to stay firm and just continue to walk in all the light that God gives us. God is going to bring a shake straight testimony to the remnant church, and it's going to cause a shaking. Testimonies, volume one, page 181 says that some will not stand the shaking. And this is what's going to cause a shaking among God's people. The, all these smooth sermons, all these uh, new theology sermons, all this apostasy that um, all these the sermons that people do videos about what happens is this right here it's pretty soon going to come to an end among God's people and God will have a people that will stand firm to him um, let me just this is some old news here but let me just get to what's going on now we know what's we know who the major players are the papacy and the United States in Bible prophecy we know who the major players are we know how this is going to happen God has already told us how this is going to happen all we need to do is connect with the lovely Jesus every single day. And because um, we know that the focal point of all this will be the implementation of the National Sunday Law, which will become the mark of the beast. But thank God we have the seal of the living God, which is revealed in the observance of the seven day Sabbath. This commandment out of all the 10 contains the elements of the seal, including the name of the lawgiver, which is Abba, which is father. Brothers and sisters, the Sabbath is a symbol of righteousness by faith, symbolic of our spiritual rest in Christ and our holiness set apart. Just as the Sabbath is holy, our lives is to be holy. 24 hours represents the 24, 20 represents the representative whole of your whole life. Brothers and sisters, the Sabbath is a symbol of how we're to live holy every single day of the week. And we thank God for this. We know that Protestants and Catholics will unite. They should not unite, but they are going to unite. But let me tell you this right here. God is sending a straight testimony. Why? Because Sister White says sins exist in the church that God hates. They exist in the church that God hates. But notice this, but they are scarcely touched for fear of making enemies. People don't want to preach the straight truth because they're scared of losing a job, losing popularity and all these things. But she says opposition has arisen in the church to the plain testimony. Some will not bear it. They wish for smooth things to be spoken unto them. And if the wrongs of individuals are touched, they claim a severity and they sympathize with those in the wrong. 
as Ahab inquired of Elijah, art thou he the trouble of Israel? They are ready to look with suspicion and doubt upon those who bear the plain testimony. And like Ahab, overlooked the wrong which made it necessary for reproof and rebuke. This is how sad it is. When the church departs from God, they despise the plain testimony and they complain of severity and harshness. This is a sad evidence of the lukewarm state of the church. But she says, just as long as God has a church, which he does, he will have those who will cry aloud and spare not. So God's going to always have a witness. So we can't say that everybody in the conference is not going to preach it. Somebody is who will be his instruments to reprove selfishness and sins and who will not shun to declare the whole counsel of God, whether men will hear or forbear. I saw that individuals would rise up against the plain testimonies. It does not suit their natural feelings. They would wish to have smooth things spoken unto them and have peace cried in their ears. I view the church in a more dangerous condition now than it's ever been. Experimental religion is known but by a few. The shaking must soon take place to purify the church. So God's going to purify the church. And one of the ways he's going to do it is through the shaking. We know the Sunday law is going to definitely shake this church. But let me tell you this right here. She says, preachers should have no scruples to preach the truth as it is found in God's word. Then she says, let the truth cut. Mm, let the truth cut. I have been shown. And whenever she says I, I'm shown, I listen very carefully. Even when she doesn't say I'm shown, I listen to it. I have been shown that why ministers have not more success is because they are afraid of hurting feelings. They are fearful of not being courteous and they lower the standard of truth and conceal if possible, the peculiarity of our faith. I saw that God cannot make such men successful. The truth must be pointed and the necessity of a decision urge. And as false shepherds are crying peace and preaching smooth things, the servants of God must cry aloud, spare not and leave the consequences with God. And that's what we got to do right here. And those who engage in the solemn work of bearing the third angel's message must move out decidedly and in the spirit and power of God. Fearlessly preach the truth and let it cut. They should elevate the standard of truth and urge the people to come up to it. It has been lowered, notice this right here, down to meet the people in their condition of darkness and sin. It is the pointed testimony that will bring the people up to decide. A peaceful testimony will not do this. The people have the privilege of listening to this kind of teaching from the pulpits of the day, but God has his servants to whom he has entrusted a solemn, fearful message to bring up and to fit up a people for the coming of Christ. There is a great difference in our faith, she says, and that of nominal professors as the heavens are higher than the earth. And this is very serious. And so, you know, we can't be ashamed of what we preach. And what we believe we can't be ashamed of the forefathers like joe cruz who wrote the book creeping compromise calling the church for repentance and brothers and sisters and this was the book that led me 31 years ago to stop eating meat it was that book just reading that book that led me to be decided to become a vegetarian and i thank god for the truth as it is in jesus and so we got to do it because we're called by god the bible says at seven day Adventist, it says remove not the ancient landmarks which thy fathers have set Remove not the ancient landmarks which thy fathers have set. So the 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 the, the, the um, standards of truth that God has given to us as seven day Adventists, we are called not to remove them. And but what's happening is is that there are people within our ranks that are trying to remove the pillars of our faith to conceal, if possible, the peculiarity of our faith. But God has raised us up like Samson to do a special work in these last days to deliver God's people from this Laodicean lukewarmness. And notice this, the Bible says that one of the things that he was not to do is that he was not to cut his hair. But the hair is a symbol of his strength and you know how strong he was. The Bible says that he, in the Bible says in the book of Judges chapter 14 and verse six, and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon Samson and he rent him or he killed him as he would have rented a kid and he had nothing in his hand. So he killed a lion with his bare hands because the source of Samson's strength was the Holy Spirit. The source of his strength was the Holy Spirit, but the symbol of his strength was his hair. You understand this right here? Let me go back again. The source of Samson's strength was the Holy Spirit, but the symbol of his strength was his hair. The source of our strength is the power of the Holy Spirit in the early and latter rain. The Bible says in Zechariah 10 and verse one, actually of the Lord, for rain in the time of the latter rain. Let's pray right now. Father in heaven, we ask you, Lord, that you would give us the latter rain right now. 
shower your presence and power upon us in Jesus name. Amen. Not only that, the spirit of prophecy talks about the condition of receiving the latter rain. I saw that none could share this refreshing unless they obtained the victory over every besetment, over pride, selfishness, love of the world, and over every wrong word and action. But the question is, how do we obtain it? We obtain victory over these things by obtaining the victory that Jesus obtained for us at the cross. And when we claim the victory by faith, we have his righteousness. And we're in spirit of prophecy tells us that Christ's character stands in the place of our character. And we are represented before God as if we have not sinned. And God empties us of self, fills us with the Holy Spirit, and we are prepared now to receive that refreshing. It says we should be therefore be drawing nearer and nearer to the Lord and be earnestly seeking that preparation necessary to enable us to stand in the battle of the day of the Lord. And what does the Bible say? To be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We're to be strong in God's strength through the power of the Holy Spirit. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. The symbol of our strength is the preaching of the three angels' messages, brothers and sisters. And we must get this out. It's time for us to give the loud cry. You know, we could keep having all these present truth speakers and all this kind of stuff, preachers that are going to tell us the things that we already know. But you know what? There are people out there that need to know the truth. You know, I'm, I need you to pray for me because I have friends that I grew up with that um, I need to reach with this message. And possibly the only way I'm going to be able to reach a lot of these friends is on social media. Notice this right here, but you know, Samson had a problem and you know what his problem was. He had a woman problem. And his problem was is that he kept on tipping and dipping with the wrong women, who, of which the Bible said in Deuteronomy chapter seven that you were not to mess around with, but he did it anyway. And he got caught up with the wrong woman and her name was Delilah. And what happened was the Bible says in Judges that he loved this woman. And the Bible makes it very plain that you know the bible makes it very plain that she led to his downfall yes indeed so what happens is this right here and he knows and he knew she wasn't right because the aramaic root word for delilah means seductive she was very seductive and and what does the bible say seducing spirits and doctors of devils rather than being about his work he's in bed with the wrong church and in bible prophecy a woman is symbolic of a church the bible said that king solomon loved many strange women and the Bible says that the 144,000 will not be defiled with women. They will not be defiled by the fallen churches of Babylon. They are doctors in their teachings. And brothers and sisters, you know what happened. He gave up the secret of his success. And she made him, the Bible says, to sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him and his strength went from him. Very interesting right here. Seven locks of his head. She began to afflict him. When will Babylon afflict the seven day of the church? When will the seven day of the church go through its affliction period? Yes, right. The affliction period of God's Renman church will be at the passing of the national Sunday law. And notice this right here. And his strength went from him. When his strength was needed the most, he compromised and cut off the seven and got his hair cut off. And guess what happened? There are seven locks of Adventism that cannot be cut. Number one, salvation and righteousness by faith as it is found in the three angels' messages. The second lock is the law of God and the Sabbath because you need salvation because we all broken the law and the law points us to the Sabbath. But the law of God also talks about how your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and then we're to care for it. That's the fourth, third lock, health reform. The fourth lock is the sanctuary message because see what happens is, is that when you go into the most holy place, it takes us to the law of God. But the most holy place takes us to where Jesus is at the mercy seat, sprinkling his blood, sprinkling his perfection upon your life to where we're covered 24 hours a day as we abide in him in his perfection. Do you understand this? That's why Ellen White says that we have a friend in court. Yes, Jesus ascended to the right hand of God. But the spirit of prophecy says that we always have a friend in court. We have a friend in court in the investigative judgment. Daniel 7 says that the judgment was given in favor of the saints. So brothers and sisters, this investigative, and this investigative judgment is in your favor. Why? Because you have, the, you have a friend in court. His name is Jesus. Number five, the state of the dead. Um, where the Bible makes it very plain that dead, no not anything. Very important because spiritualism is going to be a very serious thing. And then what happens is we have what's called the spirit of prophecy. Oh, that's an important pillar. And of course, um, the second coming of Christ, that these are the seven locks of Adventism and we cannot cut it. And look what happened 
at the time when the crisis came at its weakest point, he had no strength. And this is the reason why we as God's remnant people cannot cut off the pillars of our faith, cannot cut it off. Somebody asked me who's doing this? Leaders, laity, and pastors. Leaders and laity, all in all ranks of our church. Ellen White says, there's to be no compromise with those who are worshiping an idol Sabbath. We're to make no compromise with Sunday keepers. We're not to make any compromise with the Catholic Protestant Alliance in the last days. I was told that men will employ every policy to make less prominent the difference between the faith of seven day Adventists and those who observe the first day of the week. That means that she said she was told, God told her that the time will come within seven day Adventism where the difference between us and everybody else would almost be non-existent. In this controversy, the whole world will be engaged and the time is short. This is no time to haul down our colors. Then she says, a company was presented before me under the name Seven Day Adventists who were advising that the banner or the sign which makes us a distinctive people, brothers and sisters. And notice this right here, and should not be held out so strikingly. You hear that? You know, in other words, don't put it out there that, you know, how Adventists we are, you know, because that's going to cause people not to join us. But, you know, we can't bait and switch the world because when we bait and switch the world, then they'll just lose respect for us. It says, for they claim that it was not the best policy of securing success to our institutions. And, you know, in any, you know, in any organization, success is always looked upon in terms of numbers, in terms of people, patrons, customers, and dollar signs. That's just the way it is. And so what happens is this distinctive banner is to be borne throughout the world to the close of probation. And in describing the remnant people of God, John says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. He's talking about seven day Adventists in that text. For this is the law and the gospel, hallelujah. So he got his eyes cut off and you know what? He lost his vision. And when he lost his vision, brothers and sisters, he lost um, his ability to um to get this message out and what the devil wants seven day Adventists to do he wants us to, he wants us to lose our peculiarity for the love of babylon but brothers and sisters we love the people in babylon but we're not going to compromise and we cannot compromise and we're going to show you a video in just a few to show you how close we are in these end times because ellen white talks about the omega of apostasy in her writings she talks about a time where it will come to where compromise will be so great in our church to where she says the enemy of souls has sought to bring in the supposition that a great reformation was to take place among seven day Adventists. And that this reformation, notice this right here, would consist of giving up the doctrines which stand as the pillars of our faith. So, so in other words, we wanna change Adventism, but the way we do it, they're gonna say is to give up the doctrines which stand as the pillars of our faith and engaging in a process of reorganization. She says, quote, were this reformation to take place, what would result? The principles of truth that God and his wisdom have given to the remnant church will be discarded. The principles of dress, diet, lifestyle, even evangelism would be discarded. Then she says our religion would be changed. So what happens is there's a move right now to change Seventh-day Adventism from within to make it more appealing to the world. But all this doing is destroying Seventh-day Adventism. She says the fundamental principles that have sustained the work for the last 50 years would be accounted as error. Other words, and, and they won't just say that the pioneers were wrong, that Ellen White was wrong. What they'll just say is, well, that was just a product of their times, but we got new light. So it's many ways to say the same thing. It's just that they do it in more subtle ways. And it says a new organization would be established. When we say organization, we're talking about an, a thought organization, an organization of thought. You'll have the same structure there, but an organization of thought. Then she says books of a new order would be written, which would water down the very things that we've been teaching. Then she says a system of intellectual philosophy would be introduced. What happens is all these so-called intellectuals and stuff like here would make you think that they're to be more trusted than the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. Then she says the founders of this system will go into the cities and do a wonderful work. But the Sabbath, of course, would be lightly regarded. Can you believe that seven day Adventists who claim to keep the seventh day will be start breaking the Sabbath? They're doing it right now by going to the restaurants on the Sabbath and doing other stuff in the name of whatever. But it says it will be lightly regarded as also the God who created it. Then she says nothing will be allowed to stand in the way of the new movement. That's how serious it is to where people are getting fired, people are not getting hired, people are not getting promoted because they are a threat 
to this new movement. But God is going to send us a testimony to take care of this. And then she said that the leaders would teach that virtue is better than vice. Oh, yes, they'll talk about virtue being better than vice. But God being removed, they will place their dependence upon human power, which without God is worthless. Their foundation will be built upon the sand. And if you read Matthew 7 in the parable, what happens is the storm and tempest will sweep it all away, brothers and sisters. So what happens is Satan is setting up Adventism for failure. But what we have to do is revive the truth. And not only that, brothers and sisters, while we're fighting for the faith, we're going out here witnessing for these souls out here in Babylon, out here in the world, and doing something for God. Do you understand this right here? Because there's a lot of people out here who are ready to come in to this faith. And we cannot and shall not allow ourselves to be compromisers. Because let me tell you this right here. It's time. Samson's hair began to grow the Bible says, after he was shaven. And which means that his, and if you read the rest of the story, you know what happens. His strength began to come back. Which tells me, brothers and sisters, that God is going to send a revival of reformation and yes, he had compromised long enough, and it seemed like he was completely falling, but you know what happened. Brothers and sisters, he killed more people in that la at last minute, the last hour, at the 11th hour, revival and reformation, than at any other time in his um, ministry as a judge. Symbolic of God's rending people waking up and giving this loud cry, latter day, and latter rain message brothers and sisters this is it man and i'm telling you the lord is truly about to show up and he's about to show out because we want to present to you some things that are going on in these last days and it's nothing to be fearful of because we live we, we serve an awesome god he reigns in heaven above with wisdom and power our god is an awesome god I want to just tell you where we are right now. Right now, we're living in the apocalypse. Let me um, change this. Okay. All right. Let me change it. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. All right. All right. We're going to show you what's going on. Now, listen what the spirit of prophecy says. All right. Let me... Um, got a little problem here. All right. Not a big problem, but let me just try to get this thing fixed. All right. But this is what's going on in... Um, the Lord is showing us what's getting ready to happen now. Um, and this is the this is the time for revival and reformation. God, according to the spirit of prophecy, is calling for revival and a reformation among his people. God is calling for it and he is calling for it. He is calling for revival and reformation among his people. And um, hold on one second. I want to just share something with you. Because so persecution is going to come, you know, and the things that are going on right now lets us know that this thing is almost here. Now, listen to this right here. Now, we know what the we know what the what the crisis is going to entail. We know it's going to entail over the religious observance of Sunday. Ellen White says in Testimonies to Ministers, page 37, that the whole world is to be stirred with enmity against seven day Adventists because they will not yield homage to the papacy by honoring Sunday the institution of this anti-Christian power. We know what the spirit of prophecy says, how they will blame Sabbath keepers for all these calamities that are going on right now. Right now, we're living in this issue of the pandemic. And this pandemic, brothers and sisters, um, has taken, I mean, just when you thought that COVID-19 was going away, what happens is, is that according to people, it's come back again. And what I want to do is share with you, um, uh, hold on one second. Um, and I, Listen to this. I gotta show you this right here. Um, this is deep. I want to just show you. Yeah, listen to this. I want to show you a video that uh, uh, that just came out. A video that just came out. Now, notice this right here. We know in the last days they're gonna blame God's people. They're gonna blame God's people for all these calamities. Sister White said that. We we've read this before. But what I want to do is to show you um, what the Al the governor of Alabama has said. And this is a very serious development. Listen to this right here. This is the governor of Alabama, where she is blaming those who did not get vaccinated as why these cases are going up. Listen to what she says. The new cases in COVID are because of unvaccinated folks. Almost 100% of the new hospitalizations 
with unvaccinated folks. And the deaths are certainly occurring with unvaccinated folks. These folks are choosing a horrible lifestyle of self-inflicted pain. Besides, you know, this emotional plea you just gave us, what is it going to take to get people to get shots in ours? I don't know. You tell me. Folks supposed to have common sense. And but it's time for to start blaming the unvaccinated folks, not the regular folks. It's the unvaccinated folks that are letting us down. But as the leader of the state, don't you think it's your responsibility to try and help get this situation under control? I've done all I know how to do. I can encourage you to do something, but I can't make you take care of yourself. Mm. One more time. The new cases in COVID are because of unvaccinated folks. Almost 100% of the new hospitalizations are with unvaccinated folks. And the deaths are certainly occurring with unvaccinated folks. These folks are choosing a horrible lifestyle of self-inflicted pain. Watch this. Unvaccinated folks. These folks are choosing a horrible lifestyle of self-inflicted pain. Besides, you know, this emotional plea you just gave us, what is it going to take to get people to get shots in ours? I don't know. You tell me. Folks supposed to have common sense. And but it's time for to start blaming the unvaccinated folks, not the regular folks. It's the unvaccinated folks that are letting us down. As the leader of the state, don't you think it's your responsibility to try and help get this situation under control? I've done all I know how to do. I can encourage you to do something, but I can't make you take care of yourself. Wow, man. Before, you know, before um, I go any further, we, you know, um, it, maybe we can just unmute everybody. I don't know. What can somebody just tell me? What do you think about this? I mean, you know, this is very serious. This is the this is in my neck of the woods. Uh, the Alabama governor is blaming the unvaccinated as the reason why these cases are going up. Can somebody tell me your thoughts on this video on on what the Alabama governor has said? Can somebody give me their thoughts? Wow, I I find it very interesting to hear that because it's almost it's exactly. Bible, it's, it's prophecy right there. And they're trying to put force. It's a forced issue. And if we fall for that, we're in trouble. We cannot fall for this. Unbel this is unbelievable. I would definitely say, but we knew this was going to happen. It's uh, nothing. We knew this was going to happen. The thing is, are we, as Seventh-day Adventists, who have supposed to have the face of Jesus, are we going to fold and do or are we going to stand by our lord who promises in his word he will take care of us and even if he lets us go to sleep we are with him oh yeah i would right. like to share my thoughts go ahead um i guess my thing with the with this whole vaccine and vaccination is if you are vaccinated how am I hurting you? I should be hurting myself because I should be getting sick. I mean, isn't the vaccine supposed to prevent you from catching anything? But it seems like it's doing totally opposite based on what the governor's saying. So it doesn't really make sense what she's saying. It really doesn't. And the bottom I have, I have a I have a comment as well. Go ahead. So, uh, absolutely what Sister Mundin said, but the thing that, that it is one of those situations where they're not being uh, forthright or honest, because when you really consider it, they're telling about the individuals who supposedly have been unvaccinated going to the hospital. They're not talking about the 43,000, 50,000 people in three days who went to the hospital who have gotten the both vaccinations and they're called breakthrough cases. And they're not sharing those numbers with the world. Only those who have been unvaccinated to force them to get vaccinated. But you have just as many people who have had both shots and they are in the hospital suffering and many of them are dying. Exactly. Uh -huh. And my, my daughter said, she is. She followed the regular procedure that they did all throughout the years, 
And the ones that ended up overprotecting themselves all got it. And they had vaccinated, they all got it. And she didn't get it. Now tell me what that means, huh? And not just that. I know I know a past a, a retired pastor. My 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 my, my mother in law, my parents in law's a um, former pastor, he got the COVID nineteen vaccine and he still him and his wife got the vaccine and they still caught COVID nineteen. So the bottom line is is that it, we can infer that this this vaccine does not work. It just doesn't work. And so the, to, for us to take a vaccine that doesn't work is ludicrous. Do you understand this right here? And so what happens is this right here, and I just put, I write my name on that. But what happens is this, now they're blaming the unvaccinated. And just imagine if that goes viral. This is a governor. This ain't a, this not a, a mayor, it's a governor of a state. Man, this thing is here, man. And so everything's being manipulated for the purpose of bringing it about. And look what's going on right now. I got to show you this. This is hot off the press. Oh, listen to this right here. And now, look at this right here. In Panama, in the country of Panama, look what it says right here. In Panama, it says, uh, uh, it says, total quarantine announced on Sundays. No, total quarantine announced on Sundays in these three towns in Panama. Now, this is um, the Panamanians talking. I, I don't understand it, Spanish completely. It says, due to the increase in COVID-19 cases in the country, I had to translate this to, in, this to English. The Minister of Health, Luis Francisco Sucre, reported this Tuesday, June 29th, that the districts of La Correa, I can't even say all these things, will enter into total quarantine on Sundays. Okay, so they're having a Sunday quarantine. Wow, man, look at this right here. Sucre said that the measure will take effect on this July 4th. We're in a difficult situation. We have not come out of this pandemic while it's asking businessmen to enforce biosecurity measures within their businesses? Wow. He explained that in Panama Oeste, only in the district of La Correa will the quarantine apply. The rest of the districts, in other words, do all this kind of stuff right here. And it says, in the provinces of Herrera, the districts that will be quarantined on Sundays is these right here, right there. That quarantine on quarantining on Sunday, man. And then it says right here, Secure also announced that they will strengthen surveillance in the Rufina Alfaro district. Surveillance, I mean, come on now, surveilling people? Man, this is so draconian. Look at this one right here, curfew extension. This is from the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute. It says, this is in Panama. The government announced a curfew extension for the provinces of Boca del Toro, et cetera, et cetera, and all that kind of stuff. And it says here that districts of, these districts, I can't say all these names, including the province of Colón, will continue with a curfew from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. from Monday to Saturday. And notice this right here, total quarantine on Sundays. Man, this thing coming to an end. The mobilization of people who arrive in the country coinciding with the curfew or total quarantine time will be allowed. For this purpose, the visitor must carry proof of arrival time. It's too much, man. I mean, I can't even plan on traveling because of all this kind of stuff. So they're blaming this stuff, man. And I got some articles tomorrow for State Line tomorrow. And you just gonna have to watch it. But let me tell you this. Can you see? Can you see? I said, can you share these guidelines? And I mean, these guidelines, first of all, why are you having a one day a week curfew on Sundays? Why are you having a one day a week curfew on Sundays when this thing is going rapid every day of the week? It's definitely um satanically inspired because what happens is this right here it doesn't make it would make sense to quarantine every day if, if you was going to do it but what happens is this right here they don't realize they're just playing right into the hands of the sunday law and now all this all this um this pandemonium oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah fasten your seat belts fasten your seat belts i got something to show you and we're going to just 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 let you see it and this is going to be, we're going to show this at State Line tomorrow. This is, we are living in the last days. And look at this article. This is from Common Dreams. This came out this week. It says here, Global Alliance for a Green New Deal launches visionary campaign for the world. Wow. We don't have to wait for international agreements on the climate and nature crises. The new alliance states. Change can have... <laughs> Change can happen now. A group of global politicians on Monday launched 
the Global Alliance for a Green New Deal. I mean, but but we're just conspiracy theorists. We don't know what we're talking about. Oh, I tell you this, man. This is too much, man. I mean, what do you think about this? I mean, look at this. I'm not even going to read it yet. You, you could open the lines right now. What, look at that. Global Alliance for a Green New Deal. What does that sound like? What does that sound like? Come on now. I need to, I need to hear from you. Mm, mm, mm. What does this sound like, y'all? It sounds like an appeal for globalization. And mm -hmm. Yes, for me, that's it. Anybody else? What does this sound like? Things are in place. They're getting closer. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, in Germany, it's it's like that too. They call it the, the the green ones. My 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 cousin is here from Germany. Is is here from Germany, and she she's, she can conclude with you what you're saying. It's over there, big time. Uh, she said the same thing. Now they 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 have an already all kinds of passports. You have to have like a passport that you are vaccinated. Right, Gella? I'm the situation. Yeah, they have an, a, a, a vaccination pass and they have to have it. If they don't have it, they can't go different places. She's not vaccinated and she's not going to. Because, and uh, they're called the green, mm -hmm. they're called the green ones. They, they put, they're already they're trying to put force on the issue. Yeah. And look at this right here before we go on. Look at this. This is, this is the website. Global Alliance for a Green New Deal. Look at this. We have been strongly advocating for a Green New Deal, although in Canada we call it Mission Possible, shifting our economy in a new direction to be carbon neutral, to shut down fossil fuels, shut down the oil sands, shut down any new pipelines in Canada. Uh, the fight for the Green New Deal uh, is part of my daily work here in the European Parliament. We've been fighting uh, to have a real recovery fund uh, in the European Union, which is really green, that really boosts ecological transition, that can be a key tool uh, to build a Green New Deal uh, in, uh, in Europe. We know that if we want to see social and economic justice for people and planet, not just in this country, but globally, then we're going to need to step up with a global response to what is a global crisis. E tenho feito esse trabalho porque entendo que é preciso é, que haja responsabilidade de todos para o um novo Acordo Verde. Por isso que estou entrando na aliança para somar essa minha atuação agora como parlamentar, para que haja uma contribuição nos processos legislativos, na defesa dos direitos coletivos, seja ele meio ambiente, seja ele dos povos indígenas. De la France, aux États-Unis, en passant par l'Inde, l'Afrique du Sud, nous pensons que nous faisons face aux mêmes défis mondiaux que sont à la fois le changement climatique et d'autre part la crise des inégalités qui est d'autant plus vraie euh, au vu du contexte économique que nous vivons à la suite de cette pandémie internationale. Et puisque nous faisons face ensemble à ces défis communs, nous pensons aussi que nous pouvons les relever ensemble et collectivement grâce à un agenda commun qui est celui du Green New Deal international. Internet. Hold on. Look what she said. You see what she said? Which is the International Green New Deal. Oh, my. Wow. Do you now believe that LNG White's a true prophet, Seven Day of Venice? Amen. It's here. It's here. It's here. You can kiss this world goodbye. Let's go on. The International Green New Deal. Wow. <laughs> Para lograr cambiar las reglas de juego, es posible que todos los efectos se queden cortos ante la emergencia que tenemos hoy. Green New Deal is very important in the global world for the transformation in the something that will be more healthier and more better quality for the human beings and also for the planet of Earth. It is the only way of viable sustainable solution.
But didn't the didn't the Pope talk about saving planet Earth, brothers and sisters? Do you let me ask you a question? Don't you think the, do you think that the Pope would be interested in a movement like this? Tell me yes or no. You bet. Yes. Yes. Oh man. Absolutely. <laughs> That's, all right, let's go on. Wow. Humanidad y nuestro único planeta necesita esta alianza global for a green new deal para avanzar en legislaciones nacionales y a nivel global. And notice this right here. Hold on. Look at this right here. It says to advance wherever we may be national legislation and global policies. I mean, in that, don't you see? I'm sorry. Don't you see that something law written all over this? Talk to me, somebody. Talk to me. Woo. Global hacia una justicia social, económica, ecológica y étnica y concretizar una mayor solidaridad entre nuestros pueblos. International solidarity. Hold on. She said international solidarity and the Pope was talking about that. It's over. You put all the you put it all together. I'm telling you. Talk about an international green new deal. That's the universal Sunday law. There's a happy Pope on the on the rise. Yes, right. Eu creio que a pandemia que já matou mais de 3 milhões de humanos, ela nos mostrou que não há saída individual, que é preciso fomentar a solidariedade pela saúde pública de todo o planeta e também a nossa solidariedade. It says we need to build solidarity, but hold on now, hold on now. It says we need to build solidarity, but guess who said the same thing? The Pope. Brother, I'm telling These I'm, are all working for the Pope. All, all roads lead to the Sunday law. <laughs> I told you. Somebody's going to give Adventism an apology. And look what the Pope said. Look what the Pope said. Look what he says right here. It said here last year, he's calling for a global educational pact that educates us to universal solidarity. There it is right there. He's talking about solidarity, y'all. Can you believe this? Yep. Yeah. Look at this. Oh, the video's not even done yet. <laughs> We're not finished with the video yet. It's over, man. Oh, my. Para encontrarmos um caminho verde para o desenvolvimento econômico com preservação do meio ambiente. A nossa casa maior, o planeta, não suporta mais tantos maus tratos. We are coming together to learn from one another, to collaborate, and to show that a different kind of politics is possible. That change can happen now. The world is out of time and out of excuses. And that's why I'm delighted to be working with so many extraordinary politicians to drive the transformative Green New Deal up the global. Man, the global agenda, you see that right there? Do you see that? Oh, man, this is deep. Wow. Global Alliance for a Green New Deal. Right there, right there in your face. I told you it was going to happen. I told you. And guess what? The labor union, and trust me, the labor unions are going to get involved in this global Green New Deal. Oh, well, let me see. Let me see if I can look that up. Global. And this is the website right here. GlobalGreenNewDeal.org. Here it is right there. Look at this right here. You have to look at what's the fight. He says the same thing, you know? Wow. Look at this right here. All these people pushing for a green a global green new deal. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Ask lawmakers. It says sign the declaration for a green new deal. Let me just look at what it says. Wow. Join us by signing the declaration for a green new deal or join our growing body of politicians from around the world working for further and faster change. I'm not signing no declaration. I'm not going to sign it. Okay. So citizens, Ask the lawmakers where you are signed the declaration. They ask the lawmakers. Didn't Sister White say that there will be a popular demand for a law calling for Sunday observance? Wow. Write an e email. Let me see what it says here. All right. Look at this. Wow. It says here, 
I'm writing you as my elective representative. This is global. This is not, not just in America. This is everybody. To a sign the declaration for a Green New Deal. There are growing movements for Green New Deals around the world. <laughs> oh, man. Look at this. From active campaigns for a Green New Deal from Bangladesh to Australia, from Pacto, Pacto Verde and more. There's a Green New Deal in South Korea while in the United States, President Biden proposed an ambitious plan for jobs. And he's a union. And this is going with the unions, politicians in UK, Canada, and beyond have table bills for the ambitious Green New Deals. None of these have yet resulted in a transform, transform, transformative package of policies that are simultaneously socially and ecologically sufficient despite significant advances. As a citizen, I am concerned that no nation is currently taking action consumer with the scale of the climate, nature, and inequality emergencies I believe that the interleague crisis as we face demand a holistic solution, a Green New Deal. Wow. I urge you to sign the Declaration for a Green New Deal, strengthening the Alliance for a Green New Deal as they work to further advance and deeper change and response for interlinked challenges we face. Wow, man. Wow, man. What do you think about this, y'all? It's right there. I didn't make this stuff up. Mm, mm, mm. Man, talk to me, somebody. Oh, you, 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 you just you lost of words like I was. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've been watching this thing with the Walter video Biden. speak. Huh? Look at this right here. Look at this. Would Pope Francis back the Green New Deal? Yes, he's gonna back it. <laughs> told you, man. I told, I told you was gonna happen. I told you was gonna happen. Go ahead, somebody. Talk to me. How come you're so excited? Dr. O. <laughs> Jesus, Dr. Is getting ready. O, the Dr. Jesus, Jesus is getting ready to come. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's coming. He's coming back. Well, we want to save a few more people if we can. By Dr. The o. Of yes. Yes. Dr. O. Dr. O, the, the videos speak for themselves. There's, yeah. there's nothing you could subtract from it. It's evident. It's in your face. It's in your face. You can't be plainer than that. Man. Until it's over. Let's go. It's over. That's It's over. It's, it's, when I say it's over, all I'm saying is, is that the time is at hand. I'm not saying it's over this year, but let me tell you this right here. This is right in your face. Advancing a global green new deal, right there, so right there. It's right there in your face, Seven Day Adventist. And you yep. got these Seven Day Adventists. You got. Do you know that you got Adventists who don't want us to preach to do Sunday law updates? Can you believe that? You got Seven Day Adventists who, and you got press so-called present truth Adventists saying we should be preaching this stuff. But man, look, look what's going on. And then look what's going on this year. COP26, the Pope is going to be attending it. Man, look, Sister Bly said the final movements will be rapid ones. The Green New Deal is dealing with the labor unions. I'm telling you this right here. And I'm telling you this right here. Oh, let me, oh if you don't believe me, let me show you right now. Now watch this. And all this is this, this um, Green New Deal is dealing with is climate change. And brothers and sisters, I'm going to show you an article that I got some years ago. And just to prove it to you, we're not making this stuff up, man. And I think this really just kind of like, you know, it just kind of uh, makes it plain. And I'm just, this is a whole bunch of stuff. Now watch this, y'all. I'm, I'm gonna get to this article. And um, the world's coming to an end. And I mean, this is the reason why we do Sunday Law updates every week because every week something new is happening every week. Now I'm just kind of going through some um, slides. I mean, where's this thing at? <laughs> Man, look at this. You you ain't gonna be not gonna believe it. Look at this. The Vatican Cardo. Look at the Vatican Cardo says it's time to stage an intervention to stop climate change. You know what it's coming down to. It's coming down with the Pope, man. All this stuff is going down with the Pope. Look at this right here. This is deep. Mm. So, how should Catholics respond to the fear of a climate apocalypse? Green New Deal. Now watch this right here. Watch this. The Green New Deal needs to be global and not local. A Green New Deal needs to be low global and, and now it is. 
But look at this right here. Watch this. There it is right there. The climate change is a trade union issue. Wow. And what did Ellen White say about the trade unions? That they will bring on a time of trouble. And look at this. Major labor union endorses the Green New Deal. This was two years ago. Um, the Service Employees International Union on Thursday endorsed the Green New Deal. Man, it's here, man. I think this is it, y'all. I think the Green New Man, could it be? Now... Could it, could it be? I'm just asking. I'm just asking you. Could it be that this Green New Deal could lead to a Sunday law? Can somebody talk to me? Could, it, could this Green New Deal lead to the national the enforcement of Sunday worship? Dr. O, oh, oh, don't forget you also have a succession of other things to take place. Oh, we understand it, but it's going to be all rapid. Like bioterrorism, cyber attacks. So it's just a conglomeration of things all mixed in the same bowl of soup. You know what I'm saying? So you have bioterrorism, EMP, natural disaster, all in the same soup that they're wearing. Yeah, this thing is serious. I'm I'm convinced this is it. You see why we need the straight testimony? And look at this right here. Um, so it talks about this climate change thing, man. And then guess what they said years ago? Watch this. Watch this. Slow Sunday. Look at this. Slow Sunday. There was an article that came out in The Guardian years ago. And look what it says. Slow Sunday. The simple solution. Slow Sunday, the simple solution to global warming. The simple solution. It's all coming together. It's all coming together. That's why Ellen White says all that is not understood. Neither will it be understood until the unrolling of the scroll. And we see the scroll. The scroll is unrolling right now. And we're living in the time of Daniel 11. And I'm just I'm convinced it's over, y'all. This is it. The declaration of a global Green New Deal. And look at this right here. Green New Deal. Labor unions. Watch this right here. I, I can see it. We see it coming. Look at this. Forbes magazine, 2019. Look what it says right here. Forbes magazine. It just all we know is putting the pieces together. It says labor unions and the Green New Deal. Love, hate, or indifference. You know, this is it, man. Look at this. Green New Deal, while labor unions are divided over it. The Green New Deal just won a major union endorsement. Wow. Why? Wow. Notice this. Look at this article right here. Why labor unions are key to passing a Green New Deal. It's over. It's just a white profit. It's just a white profit. It's just a white profit. I'm done. I, you know, they could, they could say she did this, she did that. Look at this. 12, look at this. 12 reasons. Look at this. Look at this. 12 reasons why the labor union should demand a Green New Deal. Wow. Man, and the labor in the labor unions are always connected with the Catholic Church. So you could just it's over, man. Look at this. It's over. I got man, we got so much stuff tomorrow for our Sunday law update. It's not gonna make no sense. 12 reasons why labor should demand a Green New Deal. It says LNS, Jeremy Brecher, and these it's Joe, whoever argue that labor unions should take this opportunity to embrace the proposal. Man, wow, look at this. Number one, the 12 reasons why to avert catastrophe because of the climate emergency. Provide jobs for all. And you know what's going to happen. It's going to bring about the Sunday law. Rebuild the labor union. Rebuild the labor unit. And let me see what it has right here. Unify environmental and labor forces with the Democratic Party. Wow. And you know what's going to happen. It's going to just, it's going to lead to having a day of rest. Sunday, brothers and sisters. See, and Sister White's a prophet, man. She a prophet. She a prophet. Hands down. I'm done, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, but let me show you some other stuff. You see why the straight testimony got to go forward? You see why Dr. O and myself and others are not crazy? Because this stuff is happening. It's right before our very eyes. Look what's going on right now. Now, for those of you who are watching us tomorrow, read Great Controversy, Chapter 35, Liberty of Conscience Threaten. Um, you know who's going to do it, and we know what's going to happen. Look at this right here. The FBI. Look at this right here. Look at this. The FBI. 
the FBI <laughs> monitoring family members and peers for extremism. Wow. The FBI is telling you to monitor your family members and to turn them in, have mercy. As the G7 summit begins, the world needs a climate Sunday. Man, it's over. Mm -mm -mm. Now look at this, oh yeah. So it talk about a green new deal. Look at this, green Sunday. <laughs> I told you, man, it's over, man. Look at this right here. It says green Sunday in response to Pope Francis's call to protect the environment. The Bishop said that the diocesan celebration aims to preserve and protect and promote mother earth. And the church observed the green Sunday in collaboration with the government the forest department every year. Man, I got so much stuff tomorrow. It's not going to make sense. Preparing for the season of creation, having a climate Sunday. COP 26, the Pope's coming, if his help permits. Then look at this right here. People going to jail for lockdowns on Sundays, man. Look at this right here. Facebook talk about reporting people that are extremists. We in trouble. They in trouble. And then guess what? And a friend of mine showed this to me. According to this, I'm, I'm, so I'm supposed to be on this watch list you know why? Because we'll be preaching. This is me right here. It spelled my first name wrong, but nevertheless, it's me. This is here, man. How much longer we got? How much longer we have before the implementation of all what we talk about? SDAs, it's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. This is it. I believe this is, I believe this is it. This is it, y'all. This is it. Look at this. The earth, look, this is needs a green Sabbath. What am I supposed to believe? This is just uh, this happenstance. It's going to be a popular demand. It's going to be universally promoted. And the Protestants in the United States are going to be foremost. It's, it's over, y'all. Look at this. The Pope says, use the pandemic to give the earth a vital rest. What am I supposed to believe when I read this article? I'm just going to ask you, what am I? What is Pastor Olatunji supposed to believe? What is Dr. O supposed to believe when I read all this? All right, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. And then we turn it over to our moderators. We bring this to a close. Father in heaven, we ask for the Holy Spirit. We ask you for the righteousness of Christ in the latter rain. We receive it both by faith. Now that we're right in your sight, bless us with opportunities to witness to people about this truth. And may a spirit of true conversion come upon us. May angels dwell in our midst, Lord God. Be with us here at State Line. Be with us around the world. And may no weapon formed against us prosper. In Jesus' name, amen.